Hello everybody and welcome to a new series on the channel and this series is going to go into debugging errors. Uh, we're going to start off with this first episode which is going to give you general tips and tricks on how to debug errors and all the tools you need to help find where they are and how to fix them. We're then going to go on to one episode per error type or error number uh, where we'll go through the cause of the error and how you can easily solve it. So let's get started with this episode. It's gonna be in three different steps. We're gonna first of all explain the difference between a runtime error and a compile error, uh, and how you can find where the code's going wrong on both of them. Uh, we're then gonna move on to a slightly more complex uh, sub-procedure, uh, and show you how you can use the F8 step, step in tool to go through your code one line at a time. Uh, we're also within that gonna show you how you can use uh, pause breaks in order to step through your code slightly quicker when you know certain parts of it are correct. And finally, in our last section, I'm going to go through the locals and the immediate window, and we'll show you how those can be useful, uh, not in identifying where the code's going wrong, but how it's going wrong. So let's crack on. In our first sub-procedure, uh, we'll see we've named it simple runtime error. This one's just going to show you a runtime error. Uh, so I'm going to press uh, play and run my code. Normally this would be linked to some kind of event in the workbook or a button or anything like that, but we're just going to press play up here or we're going to press F5. Uh, and what you'll notice is straight away it's going to come up with a visual basic, basic error. It's going to give us three options. Uh, it's going to give us end, debug and help. I'm going to click debug. And what that will do is it will highlight in yellow the line that's going wrong uh, or where the code has stopped or paused while it can't carry on. So the key thing to note is it's already run everything above and it hasn't yet run anything below. So we can see that this is where the code's going wrong. Uh, and I can see from this that it's because I'm trying to put a string data type into an integer variable. So if I change this to an integer um, and press play to carry on and it will resume from where the yellow is, uh, then it's going to finish the sub and it's going to run just fine. So that's a runtime error. The key thing is that it will highlight in yellow the line where it's going wrong. Now, a compile error is a little bit more tricky. Uh, if we press play here, you realize it will come up with a compile error and it will highlight in yellow the sub that it's going wrong in. And this is because rather than tr being able to compile the code and then just run it, and it going wrong at a certain point in that code, it can't even compile it at all because something's gone wrong with the way you've typed out your code. It does, however, give you some indicator of where to go. And you can see here that it's highlighted this line here as the erroneous. So if I press stop now and cancel this code and press play again, you'll see that it goes through and it selects that little section there. So I know this is wrong. And if you can see the difference between this line and line above, it's just because I've spelled the word string wrong. So if I put my N in here and I press play, then you can see that this now works. So that is the two different types of errors that you should see. The compile error is normally a little bit more tricky because it can be harder to find. But as long as you bear in mind that it's not stopping on the yellow, it's going to highlight it for you instead, then you should be just fine. So that is my two types of errors. Next of all, we're going to go on to a slightly more complex sub-procedure down here. So you'll see that this has got a loop in and it's also using arrays. Uh, I'm going to press play on here uh, and you'll see that it comes up with our normal runtime message. And when I press debug, it's going to tell me exactly where I'm wrong, which is great. However, you'll see that this is inside a loop, which is going to cause me problems because I don't know which iteration of that loop it's going to go wrong in. So this is where the step in tool comes in handy. So I'm going to press stop um, and instead of pressing play or uh, F5, I'm going to press F8. And what this does uh, is it will step in one by one, by one and it will do one code at a time. So you see here it's going one line after the other as I slowly go through. And then when it gets to the loop, it pops back up as the compute program will do and it runs the loop again. So it will test this criteria run through, run through. So this is already telling me now that this has worked the first two times that I've gone through the loop. And as I keep going through, so that's three times, four times, five times, and then it goes wrong on the sixth attempt. So I know that this is, this is working. It's just for some reason, after six tries through the loop, it's going wrong. 
Now, there is a slightly quicker way of than using F8, uh, and that's using the pause break option. Uh, it's F9 on your keyboard, or you can cl click in the border next to one of your lines of code over here. So if I put a pause break on this line here, now if, when I press F5 or play, uh, you'll see that it skips the yellow line straight down to where this pause is. Uh, and if I press F5 again, and you're not going to see anything here except for a slight flash up there of running and then not running. Um, and that's because it goes through this code so quickly. But it's going to go through and loop back up to this pause. So I can do this three, four, five, six. And on the sixth time, it's going to come up with the error. So this is really useful to use uh, your F5 and your pause breaks. So you can put in as many as you want. Um, when you know you've got big sections of code that you want to skip through because you know that they work. Or if you want to go through a loop and loop through one iteration at a time rather than going through each individual step of the loop. Very helpful when you have about 20 or 30 individual little bits of code that you have to run through. One step at a time can be very painful. So that's how to tell me where it's going wrong. It's going wrong in the sixth iteration of the loop. Uh, however, it's not telling me so much about why it's going wrong at that point. Uh, and this is where the locals window and the immediate window come in. So moving on to our third part of the tutorial, where I'm going to show you how to use these two tools. So the first one I'm going to show you is the immediate window. Uh, I'm going to stop my code here. Uh, and I'm just going to go up to view. And I'm going to go to my immediate window. Uh, you can also press Control and G. Uh, and when this comes up, let's just delete the practice code I had in there. Um, this gives you a little window down here, which is blank to start off with. But what this allows you to do, and it's very powerful, it allows you to just run code on the fly whenever you want. So, for example, I can type in message box, uh, hello world, and press enter. Uh, and it will run a hello world message box for me. Um, so you can just do one line of code at a time on the fly. The other thing it allows you to do is to press question mark and then put in the name of a variable that is currently being run in your code. So if I press play on this to get it to the debugging error, debug, if I do question mark I, because I want to look at our question mark I and press enter, you can see it's going to tell me the value of that variable is 10. So this is really useful because uh, it means I know it's going wrong once I has become 10 which we would have been technically been able to work out on our sixth uh, run through of this code. Um, but in other examples, such as these SQL ones up here, where you might have really long SQL strings, that can be really useful. Um, you can also, and you might have seen this as I was waving my mouse around in a crazy annoying fashion, uh, if you hover over the variable in your code while it's paused, it will also tell you the uh, the number or the, the whatever is stored inside that variable. And it will also, when we hover over the array, tell us that subscripts out of range because it's trying to find the one with 10. So that will tell us now then that we don't want it to go out of the subscripts of this variable. So we're going to change our code over here to we want it to stop whenever i is greater than 9. Uh, and if we stop our code here and press play, then you'll see that that works perfect. Uh, if we had it as greater than 10, then we'd still get that error because we're trying to reference part of an array that doesn't exist. You don't need to worry about not knowing about arrays. The key thing is learning that F8 will take you through the code one step at a time and it will tell us and that we can find out what those variables are using I. So moving on to the locals window, uh, I'm just going to close my immediate window down uh, and I'm going to go to view and locals window instead. Uh, you can resize these if you want. Uh, and here it's going to give me a slightly different window with a table inside it. So I'm going to run through my code here uh, one step at a time. F8, 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 F8. I'm going to go through the loop once and I'm going to stop. So you can see how down here that I've got this line here which says my array. And if I click on this expansion here, you can see it gives me the value of all this, the individual elements of that array. Uh, you can see that after going through the loop once, it's set the first part of the array to hello, and then the rest of them are just blank. Uh, you can also see that I've got my variable i in here. Uh, and as I go through and press F8 within this loop, 
you'll, you'll notice that the value of i changes and you can see it live. Uh, and if we go into my array and we can press F8, you can see that it's slowly filling in my array. There we go. And it fills in the last one. Uh, and then we try and do it one last time and this is where it goes wrong. Uh, and you can see that it's because there's no room inside that array left. It's tried to do every other one uh, and it's got no room left in it. So that is really useful for seeing what values are in your new variables, which should be able to point to you where your code is going wrong. And that is the end of the video. So across this lesson now, you should be able to understand how to both find where your code is going wrong and give you a little bit of information as to how your code is going wrong. Um, so that's all. Uh, if you found the video helpful, please leave a like. Uh, and thanks for watching. I hope to catch you soon.